Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We're back with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, bite-sized business advice. And we're going to be talking about the full circle of business today. I always say the show is the Mind Body Business Show. We have another guest with us, Brenda. And I, just from talking before starting recording, she mentioned, which is I think the fifth or sixth person at this point, uh, mind, body, spirit. So I understand I have to expand that. Um, <laughs> but for context, I always say that you can't do any of those three without spirit. So spirit's kind of the glue to all three. So mind, body, business held together with the spirit. And that's what we're talking about today. So we want to optimize you, your health, your mindset, your body, and then ultimately your business so you can grow in all areas. Let me shut up and welcome my guest, Han. I'm so excited to dive into this conversation of epigenetics with Brenda. So good to have you here. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Really good to be here. And you did not have to add that little spirit caveat just for me. I got the sense already that that's woven through. So excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so do you want to hear about what epigenetics is? <laughs> I, I do. Yes. So I, we were talking beforehand and just full transparency to you listening and watching. I was like, Brenda, this sounds exciting. I love it. What is it? I have never heard the word epigenetics before, and I feel like I feel like I'm not alone. Maybe I am, but for for you know for the listeners, could you explain it just for them though, not for me? Okay, absolutely. <laughs> and just so you know, you're not the first podcast guest who said, by the way, what's epigenetics or podcast host rather? Okay, so epigenetics. Long story short, human genome been mapped only really just 20 years, 21 years now, coming up in the next couple of months. And what that means is that we have had an understanding of how genes uh, are colored, kind of matched to each other and how they express themselves. Epigenetics, epi, I should look it up, I think it's a Latin for over genetics, uh, simply means that we have the ability to do things that can overtake our genetics. So they can uh, trump our genetics. So that means that our environment, the things that we eat, how we manage stress, how we sleep, the way that we move, all of those things have an ability to impact gene expression. So some dial clients, they'll say, oh my goodness, I just have horrible genes. And I'll say, okay, can we just get this straight? You're sitting in front of me, either on a Zoom call or in my office. That means that a thousand years ago, these genes you have, you know, got you here, that you were able to run away from a saber tooth tiger, well, probably not a thousand years, but you know, you, these genes got you here. So you need to be number one, very thankful for them. Some of them, yeah probably in today's environment, especially if you have a gene to be, you know, hungry a lot and snacking a lot might not work as well when you have to go out and dig roots as it does now with, you know, having DoorDash at your door in 24 hours, seven. So maybe that's not as helpful a gene now, but you have the ability to uh, alter the expression of that, to mitigate the expression, to uh, be able to enhance some of this. So it's a very cool field and um, it's very encouraging. For, for clients, for entrepreneurs who have been trying to do all the right things, whether it's a dietarily or you know sleep hygiene or stress management, and they feel like, man, I'm just not quite getting there and missing something. Epigenetics is a really new and innovative and not yet completely understood field, but where it might give you some missing pieces of the puzzle. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I, while you were talking, since you mentioned it, I did look it up. The root epi does mean above. So oh, you, you, you nailed it, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but yeah, so, so just for context, that it that's what it means. You were right. So what we're talking about is above genetics. And yeah. I, I want to kind of see where this goes because I could nerd out on this stuff all day. Um, I don't know if you could see from watching, if you're watching, obviously, if you're listening, you can't. I wear a whoop band. I have metrics tied to my health all over the place. I monitor everything. Mm -hmm. But this is like a super meta version of monitoring because it's you're influencing your genes. I mean, that's crazy to me that you can get that level of detail with modern yeah. science. Yeah, and and you you said exactly the right word. It's with modern science. I mean, when the genome was first mapped a couple of decades ago, 
first off. I mean, you might have seen it on Time Magazine or whatever, but it wasn't like I, in my practice, went, oh, great, this is a really great tool I'm going to be able to use. It was like thousands of dollars to get your DNA read, you know, and then you didn't really know a heck of a lot what to do with it. So it's only been in the last you know, number of years where things like 23andMe and Ancestry, for example, have come to the forefront and it's been able to be more acceptable uh, financially for the common person that we've actually been able to have that. And then out of that, that's where I pull raw DNA. So I don't actually look at 23andMe and Ancestry reports. I actually have clients download their raw data and I run that through, through software that I'm trained in using. And that in turn spits out Things like, you know, like, how are you, how should you be adjusting your diet? You know, what tools can we give you to help support your sleep? And what better ways can we approach your stress management so it actually does the job that you want it to be doing? So, yeah, that's the part that's so fun. I do when you talked about geeking out on data, like probably geeking out on your DNA data is the ultimate weird way to spend a Friday night date night where your husband's going, can we just watch a movie, please? Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> that was. I'm sorry. I think that's hysterical because I would love that. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> my wife yeah. might not, but yeah, that's that would be the ultimate, the geekery, right? Um, yeah. But okay, yeah. so you mentioned three key areas: mm -hmm. stress, diet, and sleep. Uh, this yes. is a show for business owners and entrepreneurs. We don't have stress, obviously, so I don't <laughs> think we need help. But but okay, so what? How? Explain these three areas because if we could, I'm focused a lot always on my diet. Um, and I've gone different foods. And, and if you've listened to the show before, you know how I feel about diet and the importance of fueling yourself the right way. Well, I think we're going to get a cheat code to do that. Sleep, I've personally given up on. I have three kids under four, so I'll get there eventually. Maybe you can help me. But stress yeah. management, that one I think is probably the biggest for entrepreneurs. So I want to dive in here where you tell me where you want to start and then let's unpack. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm going to start with food only because in my opinion, food is going to produce energy if you're eating correctly. And it's very difficult to handle anything else if you are low on energy. So the cool thing about genetics is that we get some very specific data like a lot of times my clients come they're like oh i tried keto and you know i did paleo or actually went vegan for a couple of years and and they everyone is searching they're like what well, what's the best thing because obviously there's so much information that says this is best or this is best often a book written by somebody who that was the best approach for them is what i'm learning and i was guilty of that as well during everyone in a vegetarian diet well i watched my german husband who was raised on meat 18 times a day it wither well he didn't wither away he gained a lot of weight but mentally and emotionally was withering away so you got to kind of realize that a lot of people write from their own experience so with genetics we can look at the primary things as number one is how much protein should you be eating and we can get there's a gene called an fto gene and it gives really good clues as to for example you should be eating 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein per kilo of body weight for your American listeners or you it's 2.2 pounds so okay and so you know all the way up to if you are what's called homozygous for the variant so from your folks you got a variant from both of your folks you would need twice as much protein as someone who got the normal we call them normal and variant gene from your parent so that's a big difference in the amount of protein that you should be eating a day like if you were uh, say you were 100 kilos, 220 pounds, you know, that, that means you're varying from, you know, uh, from kind of 100 being the average all the way up to maybe 150 uh, grams of protein a day. And again, the other thing about it is it needs to be divided into kind of equal amounts three times in the day. You process so much protein at a time. Everybody is different in that. And uh, again, the other thing that we learn from genetics is whether you're better off on intermittent fasting or whether you're better off on, you know, kind of a three meal a day longer feeding window. Even for those of you who are great on intermittent fasting, I'm one of them. I love it. It suits my body really well. Uh, you know, news to me with the genetics was actually you should still be probably breaking your protein amount down into three times in a day. So maybe you need to pop a snack in there somewhere uh, in your eight hour feeding window or six hour feeding window or whatever you're doing. So that is, once you start shifting that big energy change, 
I'll give you two little quick other cheater food things. We have uh, an APOA gene, but we have a number of genes that impact our ability to digest, utilize different types of fat, saturated fat, for example. Saturated fat, been vilified, horrible, no, no, no. You need it, helps to produce cholesterol, which in turn helps to produce hormones. Super important, but you need to get it in certain amounts. And so anywhere from roughly 22 grams a day up to, I've got clients who need it like in 40, 50 grams a day. And again, a big difference. And if you're doing keto and you're like me and you need only to have 22 grams a day, you could be causing some challenges health-wise with all of your that head dough and your, you know, MTC oil and your coffee in the morning. So those are things that it's important to know. And then same with carbohydrates, just some really helpful guidelines that way. So is that good on diet or any questions you have around that? Now that you want to go tweak your diet? We, we could go for six more hours just on diet. I'm, I'm convinced okay. <laughs> we don't okay. have that kind of time. So okay. I'll, I'll say this. I would love to have you back on another episode in the future or, or 75 more episodes in the future just to <laughs> unpack all of this. But um, totally. I think that's really good on diet. Can you just reassure me real quick? If you're, yeah. if you're a subscriber or a listener of this show on, on the regular, first of all, I appreciate you and I love you, but you know, I love my coffee and yes, I have a mug with, bell from beauty and the beast on it don't judge me brenda do i have to adjust the amount of caffeine i intake based on this so it totally depends okay uh, i've got clients that i have to actually recommend that they start drinking caffeine like i never in my days of nutrition thought that i would be doing that but it does it has a helpful impact when someone has a very fast detoxification system in phase one, you want to slow that down. Caffeine helps with that. I have a very slow one. So I had to mix my caffeine, which I usually only got through green tea. So right now you can just hope that you're someone who needs to be taking it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to play uh, ignorance is bliss on this one. Yes. I'm going to hope so I can continue my absurd caffeine intake, but listen, I would not have the energy I have on this show without caffeine. And I actually want to give a shout out to our sponsor mid show here. It is uh, the Grow Disrupt coffee brand by my good friend, Stephanie Scheller. I'll drop her in the show notes. You actually can't buy this coffee. You have to go to her events for ADHD oh. entrepreneurs. So uh, a little shout out to you, Stephanie. This is the best coffee I've ever had. And the fact that I oh. can't buy it, like kills me. So Okay, no, that's that's great because I it, it give me something I can recommend for my clients who should be on caffeine, so that's really good. Yeah, so absolutely. Then you, so, so that's nutrition. So next, yeah. we just will just lightly touch on sleep, and and again, sleep. I mean, I totally have empathy for you. We have five kids over twelve years. I don't even remember those twelve years. I I don't know what we did in our <laughs> lives. Okay, and now we're starting to get grandkids, and I'm like, oh my goodness, like what were you thinking? Okay, but. The thing is, is that there are a couple of genes, again, that play a huge role in sleep. Uh, and I'm just giving you the nutshell here. So yeah. everything is interrelated. It's not just this gene alone. But we actually have a gene called a clock gene, which I think is pretty cool. It's the only gene that actually has a, a name that you can understand what it does, okay? And it <laughs> actually helps reset circadian rhythm, okay? And circadian rhythm, super important. And I'm not just talking wake and sleep cycle. Circadian rhythm, you know, large organs in our body and systems all operate on a circadian rhythm. So super important. So for those of us that have this gene or in red, again, red, if you use like a traffic light symbol, that would be like you got the variant from both of your folks. And again, me. So you got to know that I'm functioning at a really high level with some challenging genes. Okay. So this gene actually um, is kind of referred to as a circadian pacemaker. And if you're somebody that has this in red, then insomnia can be a major characteristic that you just struggle with no matter you know, what you do. And so some simple tips, if you've tried everything you know to deal with sleep and it's not working, is to start resetting your circadian rhythm. Super way, easy way to do that is you get outside within an hour of wakening, uh, get outside, uh, glasses off, unless they're just clear glasses like this, but not like kind of glasses or transitions. And you need to get 10 minutes of sun in your eyes, not obviously staring at the sun and burning your retina, but you know, like you be common sense here, people. It's uh, if it's, yeah, <laughs> if it's a cloudy day, I live in Vancouver, it's often that. That means I need to be out for 20 minutes. And if it is super overcast, rainy, you've got an umbrella, then you need 30. You consistently do that. And I look like a geek sitting out in my little front 
you know, porch, you know, with my coffee, with my coffee, with my bring a drink, with my coat bundled up in cold weather, you know, doing my meditation out of my front deck in the morning with my neighbors driving by. But super, super simple and helpful way to start to reset that. Obviously, sleep hygiene, getting to bed at a good time, and then also paying attention if you are, you know, having trouble falling asleep, then that will be a certain genetic influence and certain perhaps supplements that would help with that. If you wake up in the night, go to the bathroom, can't fall asleep and get back because you are solving your problems of your business or more likely all the problems in the whole world, you know, that that is often indicative of another gene that I'm going to talk about in a minute when I cover the stress one. Or if you're waking up way earlier than you want to, like you're like four and five, that again is typically maybe a serotonin response and maybe you have a gene that doesn't easily convert tryptophan, which is an amino acid from your food, into um, the serotonin that we need that then helps produce melatonin. So again, genetics is super helpful. So you're not just throwing, you know, bucks at supplements and trying all these things all at the same time when we can go, oh, this is segue to stress management. This is your FKBT5 gene. You don't turn off your HPA axis very well. And I'll take a pause. Any questions around sleep before we move into stress management? I, I do. I want to I want to highlight something first because I think we compare, especially as entrepreneurs, we compare ourselves to others in terms of sleep. And I think the two uh, the two best examples that come to mind, it's really three examples, but the extremes are Elon Musk and Gary Vaynerchuk. And they both have publicly said they sleep like three to four hours a night, every night. And these are the, some of the most highly effective entrepreneurs and, and the wealthiest in the world. So yeah. we put them on a pedestal and say, well, we can do that. And But on the flip side, I've heard that Jeff Bezos sleeps eight to nine hours a night and he's just as effective. So I, I don't think yeah. that we should be comparing to ourselves to others in terms of sleep. This is a phenomenal approach to see what's right for you though. Yes. Exactly. And even if um, I'm not going to refer to Elon Musk, I'm not going to talk about that, but I'm just saying clients that I have that tell me they get by on three to four hours of sleep and I look at their production and it looks like in theory they are. When I dig in a little deeper, I'll be going, yeah, you are. But at what cost? Mm -hmm. What are the other things that are going on genetically that this is not a good thing for? So I absolutely agree. There is a range. Uh, and you want to find out what yours is and absolutely get those. For most people, eight to nine is better. Oh, okay, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's great. But I, I agree with you. I think the biggest thing that's happened with the last five years that I've been studying this field and using this with my clients is that people can stop the whole comparison game. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, like this is how I'm wired. Yeah, and next time someone in the coffee, you know, shop or whatever says, Oh yeah, you gotta try this diet, they can just go, actually, no, I don't. You know, <laughs> like, that would that would kill me. Like I'm not going there. Your life is so much settled, you know how to eat, you know what time to go to bed, you know how to manage stress. So it just takes a whole load off you. So you can actually, I think, do the other things you were supposed to be doing here besides just trying to survive. Okay. Uh so I mean you know, like tens of thousands of years ago, we didn't have to worry about this because we just did things naturally. We ate the food that was around us. We went to bed when the sun went down. So it's a new phenomenon. We're trying to run businesses and get this stuff all sorted out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Last thing, stress management. So like I'm, you know, I'm also trained as a social worker, worked in that field for 10 years. So i got lots of, you know, knowledge around mental health issues, emotional health issues. And it's been really fascinating to learn that no matter how many tools you have, that there are certain genetics that mean it will be very hard for those tools to last long term. So I mentioned this FKBT5 gene. I have it in red. I'm giving you all examples where I have the most challenging ones, okay? And um, I'm really good at stress management. I've got a zillion tools. I practice centered prayer, meditation, you know, did yoga for lots of years. I, I, being in nature is like my husband and I do these fly in canoe trips where you get dropped off in a lake and you go with some friends to this. And I, it's like my husband doesn't, your cells just vibrate. Like you're there and you are so zen, it's not funny. However, this gene works on your HPA axis. So 
real quick, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenals, it's like they kind of, hypothalamus drips down little you know, messages and hormones to the pituitary gland, drips down little messages and hormones to the adrenal gland, and you produce cortisol. One of the stress hormones, one of the fight or flight ones, super helpful, you know, you run away from saber tooth tigers or a car that's erotically driving towards you, whatever. you want those hormones to be in place. And the problem is, is they're supposed to be intermittent, you know, high when you get up in the morning, drop down through the day naturally. By the time you go to bed at night, they should be at the lowest level. You fall asleep easily. You wake up to the bathroom, you come back and hit the pillow. Man, you're just gone again, like two seconds flat. When you have disruptions in this HPA axis, like the FKBPG5 gene can do, the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the adrenals don't get the message to shut off the cortisol. So there is a negative feedback loop problem. It's like if you can imagine their glands are just going, we're not listening, we're not listening. And what happens then is you stay in elevated fight or flight mode for longer periods of time than you should be. You go and do your meditation, your whatever it is, you feel just completely calm for like five minutes. And then I joke that if you have this gene, you know, variant from both your folks, literally you sneeze and bam, you're back in like hypersensitive mode again, you know, ready to tackle anything. That's a really hard way to live. Like it, 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 you spend so much time trying to get into parasympathetic, rest, recuperative, dial down, hang out with the kids, the family, whatever. And then just the slightest thing can set you off again. So that's also, if you know you have that, there is certain supplements, there are certain things you can do to reset that. And I gotta tell you, the last five years, I've been the most chill. You know, you might not think I'm very chill, but relatively speaking, most chill, most able to rest, most able to sit and watch a movie without having to mop the floor, plan my next five-year business plan at the same time. It's my whole family is just like in love with this. So that, yeah, that's that gene. Okay, wrap. Any questions? <laughs> no, that's that's so cool. As you were describing that, though, I was thinking of uh, my mom for sure have has that. Uh, love you, mom. First of all, but yeah, it's it's the the sneeze and like ah panic. Um, that's that's really funny. So having the tools and the supplements and understanding what you need to relax that and then be able to be more productive. Because when you're in that fight or flight mode, you actually cannot be productive like physiologically you can't as an entrepreneur in particular yeah. so really important to have them welcome back to another i got excited and hit the keyboard but we love tech here we were talking about that before the episode so brenda listen this has been uh absolutely amazing i know you have we got to wrap this episode up you have a, a freebie for the audience that i, I want you to go over i want to put it on the screen here the website it'll be in the show notes for those of you listening um what do you have for us here Basically, a lot of times clients wonder, well, is it worth it getting my genetics done? Like, is what's the be benefits of this? So that is simply a little self-help survey. It probably takes you five, six minutes to complete. It would just ask questions about where you are in your wellness right now and gives you some insight as to whether some work in epigenetics might be helpful for you. So as hopefully we'll answer some questions. It's a freebie little gift. And then out of that, if you have any questions, you're welcome to be in touch with me. That's that's fantastic. So yeah, if you are a nerd entrepreneur like I am, and you want to know everything about how your body operates and how to not only that, how to optimize yourself for for yeah. peak and maximum performance, that's really the root of what we're talking about here. So thank you so much for sharing all of this. We definitely have to have you back on because we could continue to unpack and unpack and unpack and yeah. and geek out on this stuff. This was awesome. Um, yeah. Where can we? Where can the listeners follow you online and, and follow your journey? Learn more about this. Yeah. InbalanceLM.com, so LM stands for Lifestyle Management, so InbalanceLM.com. There's other free resources on there as well. Uh, and then that's the same handle on Instagram and Facebook, so you can find me in either of those places and uh, a little bit on TikTok. Uh, it, yeah, <laughs> TikTok is challenging for me, but my children are encouraging me, so we're getting there. <laughs> I always like to make the joke that uh, if you're not shaking your butt on TikTok, you don't get the views. So I'm trying as well. I'm not shaking my butt yet. Maybe maybe we'll do that together. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. enough of that. Okay. All right. This has been an amazing episode. Thank you again for coming. And for those of you listening, make sure you subscribe if you want to, if you want any more of this ridiculous show we put on here. Uh, but I thank you for listening to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Hopefully you got that bite-sized business advice and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks.